Sorry, I, I yelled loudly. That's okay. I got I got the limiter on. Okay. So uh, you can the tell my kick. Setting? Yeah, you can you can so you can Wait, tell. Really, it automatically limits it when it, I yell. It does when you get when the pitch gets too high. It it <laughs> it does. When sometimes if you sound like all robotic, it's oh because it's God. it's bringing the decibels down. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video. So we're kind of doing our own videos today. It's almost like we're like living in separate houses or something. Maybe I'm maybe I'm recording this from the dog house. Maybe I'm recording this from the couch, the guest house. No, actually, we've just been very busy and it makes sense for us to just kind of record videos as they come up as one of us is available. That's what's going on. Nothing major. Got a lot going on behind the scenes. We're going to talk about this situation with uh, Steven Spielberg coming out and saying now that he regrets taking the guns out of E.T. Now, for those of you who don't know, the 20th anniversary uh, re-release of E.T. had a few changes. It was very much like, you know, George Lucas going back and doing special edition of uh, Star Wars. And uh, Steven Spielberg went through and made some changes to E.T. There were a couple of scenes that were added. Uh, they modified E.T. somewhat to have more expressive, uh, for the time, CG effects, which look kind of video gamey now. And uh, one of the most controversial changes was him taking the guns out of E.T. Because at the time, I remember him saying uh, he didn't feel right about having, having uh, federal agents point guns at children. And uh, I remember thinking how stupid that was because these are federal agents dealing with an unknown alien entity. They don't know what they're coming up against. It would absolutely positively make sense for them to have guns. I mean, this this has been mocked about as much as, as uh, you know, Greedo shooting first. You know, it was a really stupid, stupid thing to do. And now Steven Spielberg is coming out and saying, yeah, you know, we shouldn't change old movies. We shouldn't change old movies. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like, what the hell? So I think what's going on now is we're starting to see the pendulum swing back to common sense. And we're starting to see a lot of uh, Hollywood elites, Hollywood, uh, you know, uh, directors and actors getting canceled for like everything. They're starting to see their work get altered. Of course, Disney is quietly editing movies or, or uh, you know, putting disclaimers on movies all the time. We live in a perpetual current year. Right. And it's, it's getting stupid and it's getting ridiculous. And at some point in time, you have to realize these movies were made at a particular time and uh, place, and they reflect the world as it was during that particular time and place. Meanwhile, we've got Netflix leaning into, you know, smoking and guns and all that and Stranger Things. Weirdly enough, though, they actually cut a couple of scenes out of Stranger Things, as I understand it. And, uh, you know, made some changes so so Steve wasn't as creepy. And uh, I don't think you can buy Stranger Things in physical, I don't think. So you're pretty much at their mercy. And that's the problem with digital, right? That's the problem with streaming is that uh, you can make all kinds of changes to older works of art. And, and that's the only version that exists is whatever the current version is, which is kind of scary. But I think people are people are tired of it. When you've got Steven Spielberg, who was a huge advocate for being able to make these kinds of changes coming out and saying, hey, this isn't right. I don't feel the same way now. I think I think things are definitely changing. So we're going to talk about this in a very special episode of Clownfish TV. Before we get into it any further, uh, please subscribe for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Guys, you'll get a woohoo. Geeky's not here. I'll give you a woohoo. Uh, woohoo. <laughs> that's about as excited as I get. Uh, you know, that's about as excited as I get. So check, check this out. This is, uh, on Indiegogo. People had some, some questions about what this is. This is previously on Clownfish TV. This is a new graphic novel containing a series of what was originally designed to be a web comic, um, by, uh, Jim Wong. And, uh, we actually hired him officially. He was doing fan comics. We hired him officially, about a year and a half, two years ago, to do a series of web comics for us. And then we just never 
never posted the web comics because we got kind of busy, but we've collected these previously unseen strips uh, into a book and uh, you can check check that out on Indiegogo or you can go you can go to clownfishtvcomic.com and it will take you directly uh, to the page. But yeah, there's about 100 and some pages of strips based on stuff we've talked about. Uh, some of it directly, some of it uh, indirectly, and uh, we thought it was pretty cute stuff. That's why we uh, we hired Jen to do it. But um, you know, he's taken some liberties with some of the things that have happened. And and uh, for those of you who, yep, yeah, there we got some geeky taking her taking her big breath before she uh, she gives the finger, flips people off. Um, we've also got some other stuff in this campaign. We've got some stickers and stuff. We got, uh, we got more pins. We're actually going to be doing more pins of the current avatars too. We're going to throw that into this campaign. And, uh, yeah, people are asking where Crimson Ren is. It's only, it's only three weeks late guys. It's only three weeks late. And I'll tell you exactly where it is. It's with the printer and it's been with the printer, uh, for quite a while. Uh, in fact, I've had multiple conversations with the printer, and I'm trying to figure out exactly when we can expect these books to come in. My understanding is that the pipeline is jammed. Uh, the printing pipeline is jammed. And and if the book were soft cover instead of hard cover, we would have had them in hand by now. But because we're doing hard cover books uh, with UV coating, which is like the shiny stuff on the cover, uh, there, it's a little more involved. Actually, it's a lot more involved to do those books. And then we've got like custom end sheets and all this stuff going on, uh, with Crimson Wren. When we get it in, it's going to be absolutely effing beautiful. Uh, it is. And, uh, we're looking forward to actually this year, we're going to be bringing you, uh, Shadow Binders 3. We're going to be doing a campaign for that. That book is more than halfway done because a lot of it is the remainder of the webcomic version of Shadow Binders. And then we're going to have all new material going forward. And uh, we also have Crimson Wren Volume 2, which is the second half of that storyline. That's going to be coming at you this fall. So we got a lot of things going on, as well as Adventure Engine. If you go to adventureengine.net, we are working on our own tabletop uh, RPG system. And, uh, you know, it is eventually we're going to have a Bellatier world, uh, campaign world, which is the Shadowbinders world. But we're also going to have kind of the, the vanilla fantasy world, too. Anyway, lots of stuff going on. Again, for this particular project, check out Clownfish tvcomic.com. It's out on Indiegogo. It's, it's pretty fun stuff if you like the channel. Uh, so anyway, let's, let's talk about this. This is, uh, this is coming from Variety. Steven Spielberg regrets editing the guns out of E.T. Says no film should be revised for today's standards. That was a mistake. Hey, Disney, no film should be revised for today's standards. Uh, where is Song of the South? I think most people fully understand that Song of the South was a product of its time. They understand that, uh, you know, Walt maybe got ahead of himself when he did it. But the movie is, is still a beloved movie with beloved characters. It still means a lot to people. It is an interesting historical artifact. And uh, I think you should treat it as such. Uh, you know, Warner Brothers, they took Gone with the Wind Down and then they put it back. But they put it back with an introduction. I can't remember off the top of my head who did the introduction. But I'm like, that's all you have to do. Get Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg likes Song of the South. She said repeatedly she likes Song of the South. She's already working for you. She's a Disney legend. Get her to put some kind of a preamble on Song of the South. Don't put it on Disney Plus, maybe. But uh, release it on Blu-ray for people who would like to watch this movie and enjoy this movie and realize this movie, again, was a product of its time. Uh, I don't think it's overtly racist, personally. Um, and I used to work on those characters in the comics, and I, I love the Brer characters. I don't think it's overtly racist. I think it was done in earnest. I just think it was, you know, maybe a little tone deaf, you know. But uh, the gentleman who played Uncle Remus, James Baskett, uh, he, he received an Oscar. It was an honorary Oscar, but he was the first black male performer to receive an Oscar. And th his, this accomplishment has been completely erased. Uh, here he is, here he is getting his, his Oscar for playing uncle Remus. And this accomplishment has been completely erased because Disney has completely buried this movie 
Um, so that's my little rant about Song of the South. I think that if anything, it's the most offensive thing about it is that it's as boring as hell in places. <laughs> I think the live action, uh, the live action segments are boring. So let's talk about E.T. Uh, Steven Spielberg participated in a master class at the Time 100 Summit and announced he regrets editing guns out of E.T. The film's 1982 theatrical cut includes a scene of officers chasing young kids with firearms. Spielberg edited the guns out for the 20th anniversary release of the film and replaced the firearms with walkie-talkies, which looks weird as hell. That was a mistake, he said. I never should have done that. E.T. is a product of its era. No film should be revised based on the lenses we now are either voluntarily or being forced to peer through. Again, Disney is going through and editing a bunch of its problematic movies uh, for no good reason. I mean, there's there, I, again, I mean, I can understand some of the very, very overtly racist cartoons that came out of the 30s and 40s. Uh, Song of the South is not one of them. Dumbo is not one of them. And yet they are problematic uh, current year, but I think everybody, everybody with a functioning brain, which apparently we're running out of people with functioning brains, everybody with a functioning brain understands that these movies were made during a different time and place and things that would fly then won't fly now. Hell, things that were made 20 years ago, sitcoms that were on the air 20 years ago would not be made today. Friends, they're going after friends. Friends would not get made today. Friends would be problematic. I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, E.T. was a film that I was sensitive to. The fact that the federal agents were approaching kids with firearms exposed, and I thought I would change the guns into walkie-talkies. Years went by, and I changed my own views. Spielberg continued, I never should have messed with the archives of my own work, and I don't recommend anyone do that. Hear that, George Lucas? Uh, all our movies are kind of a signpost of where we were when we made them, what the world was like, and what the world was receiving when we got those stories out there. So I really regret having that out there. Uh, yeah, it's been parodied multiple times about taking the guns out. I mean, I, as a kid, I never questioned it. These were federal agents dealing with an alien threat, a potential alien threat. They don't know what they're dealing with. Hell, E.T. can make bikes fly. He could, he could freaking shoot laser beams out of his eyes and kill your ass. You don't know what you're dealing with. Spielberg's regret over censoring E.T. led the Time 100 moderator to bring up recent news about Roald Dahl and other authors' books being censored for offensive language and republished with language considered more inclusive by today's standards. Nobody should ever attempt to take the chocolate out of Willy Wonka, ever. Uh, he added on a more serious note, for me, it is sacrosanct. It's our history. It's our cultural heritage. I do not believe in censorship in that way. Spielberg most recently directed The Fablemans, which was nominated for seven Oscars, and he's doing a remake of Bullet and yada, yada, yada. Uh, no, I agree with him. I, I wondered how long it would take for Hollywood to get a clue and for these directors to realize that censorship is not your friend. These corporations are doing this, trying to be progressive and inclusive, but they are defacing works of art. They're defacing works of art. I think we are past the, I guess, the age of woke. Is that what we're calling it? The age of woke? I think we're, we're getting past that when guys like Steven Spielberg, who are old school liberals, guys like Steven Spielberg are saying, hey, we've gone too far. We are now defacing our cultural heritage. We need to stop this. Everybody understood that in the early 1980s, the feds would have pulled guns on kids, especially since you're dealing with an alien. You don't know what the hell is going to happen. It would probably happen today, too, right? I don't care if they're kids on bikes. That alien could kill you. You don't know. Um, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I think more more Hollywood people, especially that you know Hollywood people with the clout of Steven Spielberg, need to speak up and say, "Hey, enough is enough. This was silly. This is a very silly, stupid time in our history. It's very dangerous." Again, a lot of people, and he would know better than most, uh, given that he was the the director of Schindler's List. Um, it's very dangerous when you stop talking about horrible things that happened in our history because it makes people feel bad. There are schools. There apparently that are not teaching about World War II because it makes people sad. I'm like, you're supposed to feel sad. That's the point. You're supposed to feel sad so it doesn't happen again. You need to be aware of how things like that happened 
And I don't think I can talk about that thing that happened with that guy with that mustache in World War II, but you need to be aware of how things like that happen so we don't repeat the same mistakes we made in the past. And uh, it begins with art being vandalized and then history being rewritten. And eventually, you know, again, we live in an endless present where there's only the party and we, we can't do that. We can't allow ourselves uh, to do that. And, and, you know, it might not seem like a big deal to, you know, edit some problematic movies to make them more palatable for modern audiences, but it's a slippery slope, guys. It is. Everybody understood these movies were a product of their time. You'll leave them alone. You know, if somebody's offended by the movie, don't watch the damn movie. You know, trust me, just, just don't watch it. If E.T. is so damn offensive, well, one, you're a pussy, but two is don't watch it. Don't watch the movie. There are, movie, there are movies out there that bother me that I don't watch because I'm like, you know, it either hits too close to home or it's depressing. Um, you know, I, I don't have any desire to watch them again. And that's okay. Not every movie is for every person. And we just have to understand this. So I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.